Hello. I don't know what a Digimon is. If, if that statement is enough to get you annoyed or whatever, then I, I guess before I go into this, I'll give a little bit of background because I'm clearly not the first to cover Digimon or anything like that, the TCG anyway. But in case you didn't know, I'm a I'm a big TCG fan. I love Vanguard, I love Yu-Gi-Oh, I love Pokemon. Kind of getting into magic here and there, but we'll see. And this appeared, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll play it. Um, I'm not a Digimon fan. In fact, I never really got into it. Uh, I, I watched it as a kid, but I don't remember anything from it, you know? Like... Just like how I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon as a kid, but then like as I grew up, Pokemon never left me. I always stayed into Pokemon. And then when I became a teenager, I like kind of went back and got into Yu-Gi-Oh! again. Digimon, I just kind of never really got into. And I've always meant to, but I've always kind of been busy. And well, I'm a big TCG fan, so let's see if this is how I get into it. So this is going to be the tutorial. As you can see there, it says tutorial amp. It feels a bit weird that they'd create an entire amp just for the tutorial. It feels like, well, you know, if you're going to have it in there, why not have like online matchmaking and stuff too, so that we can actually play it like a proper game. But I mean, hey, at least it doesn't have a gacha system. It looks at the off, like looks at the office style, like camera awkwardly. Um, but yeah, hey, you know, that's, that's something. So I'm just going to play this for a bit, going to record myself doing so, and we'll see where we go, basically. Let's tap to start, and then let's go to the tutorial. Begin tutorial. So I'm, I'm a level over you. I don't know how this game works. I think I saw like one tutorial video like a few months ago when the game originally launched in Japan, but I didn't pay that much attention, and I don't remember anything from it. I know there's like an energy gauge of some kind. In this tutorial, you'll learn the basics of the Digimon trading card game. This includes playing Digimon, Digivolving, and breeding. Uh, okay. Cool. Alright, cool. Your turn. In the draw phase, you draw one card from your deck. Whoever that player that goes first can't draw on their first turn. Cool. Breeding phase? Oh, god. <laughs> I mean, I know that breeding is probably, like, a thing. You know, like, Pokemon breeding is, like, a thing, but, like... Just the term breeding phase in a card game feels weird, but maybe that's just me being a naughty boy. Uh, during the breeding phase, you can do one of the following. Place one card from your digi egg face up in the breeding area. This is called hatching a digi egg. Move a level three or higher Digimon from the breeding area to the battle area. Do nothing. <laughs> All right, interesting. This time, let's hatch a digi egg. Place one digi egg card from your digi egg face up with the breeding area. All right, I'm just gonna tamp a thing and hope that works. Hatch Digimon are level two. If you later digivolve them to level three or higher, you can move them to the battle area. Oh, okay, so they can't battle yet. That's interesting. Digivolving a Digimon causes it to become one level higher than it was. Let's digivolve the Coromon in the breeding area. The digi the digi the digivolution conditions of the level 3 Agumon in your hand are that it must be digivolved into a red level 2 Digimon with a memory cost of 0. Okay, I think I finally understand how people feel when I start talking about Vanguard because none of those words were were fit. Like digivolution like I'm not hating, I think it's pretty cool, but also that's very tremendously silly. Uh, Coromon is a red and level 2, so it meets those conditions. Yeah, sure, okay, I'm just gonna... So I can place that... there? Okay, cool. Take the Agumon in your hand and place it on top of Coromon to Digivolve. When you do, you draw one card from your deck as a dev dig A Digivolution bonus! Okay, alright. Try playing the Biomon. See, that's the thing with Pokemon. Pokemon's a super easy trading card game to learn because chances are, as you're getting into it, you already know quite a bit about Pokemon from the games and stuff. And so it, it, it a lot of that is mechanically like kind of put in there. So it's like, you know, when it's like, oh, you place your Charizard card on top of Charmeleon to evolve it. You're like, oh, I, I kind of get how that works. I don't know Digimon. So this is just, yeah, this is... Mm. Play, try playing the Biomon in your hand. In order to play a Digimon, you have to pay its 
play cost since the Beomon in your hand Place the Beomon in your hand to the battle area, then play its play cost, then pay its play cost of 2. In order to pay memory cost, you move your memory counter that many spaces away from your side of the memory gauge. Alright, as long as you can pay the memory cost, you can play powerful level 5 or 6 Digimon. Wow, level 6 Digimon! Damn! Whoa, that's a lot of levels. Jeez, usually it goes up to like three. All right, so like I play that in the battle area, right? Okay, and then that tamps my manner, I guess. Did you want to play from your hand? Can't attack that turn. Oh no, they got summoning sickness. I don't like summoning sickness. Um, your turn ends if the memory counter moves one higher than your opponent's side of the memory gauge. If you use lots of high cost cards, you're giving your opponent one more memory to use during their turn. Oh, that's super interesting actually. So you can use, effectively you can use a lot of the mana, but the more of it you use, the more advantage you're giving your opponent. I see, I see. Try moving your, a Digimon from the breeding area to the battle area. Since Agumon is level 3, it can be moved to the battle area. Uh, Alright, that goes next to it, right? Okay, cool. There's no memory cost for moving Digimon from the breeding area. Moving Digimon this way does not count as playing them, so the Digimon can attack. Alright, so playing them is when you just place them from your hand to the field. Got it. Digimon moved to the battle area can't be returned. Makes sense, makes sense. You can Digivolve from the battle area as well. Try Digivolving Beomon to Corydramon. Alright, cool. So, like, I do that, right? Yep. Mhm. Mm Wait, that's the digi. That's the that's the digivolution. That doesn't look anything like the thing I just evolved from. What? Take the Corydramon in your hand and place it on top of Beomon. Then play the required memory cost. Draw one card as a digivolution bonus, and digivolution is complete! Exclamation mark. Digivolution doesn't count as playing the card. So the Digivolve card- oh, so did you- So playing a card isn't the act of placing it on the field then. I guess if it's an already existing Digimon, then just evolving it doesn't count. I guess that makes sense, sure. So the Digivolve card can attack that turn. However, if you play a Digimon from your hand, then Digivolve that card, it can't attack that turn. Alright. You, you, you'll probably hear a lot of me like umming and ahhing because I'm like, what, what is happening? But to be fair, that happens every time I learn a new card game. So bear with me here. I didn't do research, but you know, would you have it any other way? Let's do another tutorial. Let's see where things go. I kind of want to get in just into a full like card fight, Digimon battle, whatever it's called. I kind of want to get into that this video, but I'm not sure if I can squeeze it in. I don't know how much recording memory I have. Very professional. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the basics of battle. Victory conditions. Get rid of all cards in your opponent's security stack. Security stack, huh? That's... Alright, that's an interesting term. Uh, then attack them directly. Then attack... Oh! You get rid of the cards, then attack them. So, is the security stack your prize cards? If so, why do you have to battle them after you've gotten rid of it? Huh. Interesting. Okay. Now then, it's time to attack your opponent. You attack by taking one of your upright or unsuspended cards and rotating it sideways. That is, then it's suspended. Suspend your Agumon to declare an attack. Oh, so it's like Vanguard, basically. Okay, I, I can Vanguard. I can Vanguard semi-competently. You can attack your opponent or any of their suspended Digimon. Right now, your opponent doesn't have any suspended Digimon, so you'll attack your opponent. Right, so I attack him directly. Okay, so to attack a Digimon, you have to be sideways first. Okay, cool. When you attack a player, perform a check on one of their security cards. The card is revealed with Hammer Spark. When the card with a security effect is revealed by a security check, the effect activates. Hammer Spark's security effect is gain two memory, so the memory count will move two spaces to the right. Okay. If the memory counter on ones moves one or higher to your opponent's side of the memory gauge, it will become their turn once the attack is over. Once the security card activates the security effect, it is placed in its owner's trash. Okay, trash is good. I like trash. G graveyard! Drop zone? No, just trash. Just put it in the trash. Security effects do not require a memory cost to activate. Interesting. Okay, I think I see how it goes. 
Time to block with one of your opponent's attacks. Blocking is defending against one of your opponent's attacks with a Digimon that has the blocker skill. Suspend Kore Dramon and declare that you're blocking. Using block switches the target of the attack to one of the blocker and two Digimon do ma and the two Digimon do battle. Blocking is an important technique to protect your security stack on important Digimon. Yeah. Yeah, attack that one then. In battles, you compare the DP Digimon power of both Digimon. Isn't that a bit redundant to say that a Digimon's power is the Digimon power? Whatever. The Digimon with the lowest DP loses is deleted and sent to the owner's trash. If the two Digimon have the same DP, it becomes a tie and both are deleted. Okay, so it's Yu-Gi-Oh rules. Okay, got it. Interesting. And then I get a card. Uh, when a, when a Digimon is revealed from the security stack, it becomes a security Digimon and does battle with your opponent's Digimon. If the attacking Digimon loses or the battle ends in a tie, it is deleted. Security Digimon are sent to their owner's trash regardless of the outcome of the battle. Security Digimon differ to normal Digimon in that they can't activate any effects other than security effects and aren't affected by card effects that would affect a normal Digimon. <laughs> Security Digimon differ from normal Digimon in that they can't activate any effects other than security effects that aren't affected by card effects that would affect the normal Digimon. That is not English. That is just no, that's not a sentence. That, yep. Again, I want any hardcore Digimon fans out there to realize that my incredulous tone is more of a like excited one than it is a critical one. Let's hatch an egg. Yeah, okay. I, I, do, I will say, I do quite like their commitment to putting Digi at the beginning of every word and Mon at the end of every word. That is quite amusing. Like, they just, every single word, huh? Digivolve Coromon into Mon B Biomon. There we go. I Digivolve Mon you. Digivolve B Biomon into Mon Birdramon. Birdra. Well, like that? Is that what it's asking me? I'm hoping that's what it's asking me. Trying to tie it. It's time to try out the option card, Shadow Wing. If you're using it from your hand, you activate its main effect. In order to use an option card, you must have at least one Digimon of the same color or one Tamer of the same color in either your battle area or your breeding area. Where do I put it? Do I just put it anywhere? Okay, cool. Reveal the Shadow Wing in your hand. Pay memory cost of one. Its main effect is one of your Digimon gets 3000 DP for the turn. Target spell. Target Agumon with this effect. Alright, pretty simple. It's basically just a Yu-Gi-Oh spell card. That's how I learn card games, is I just compare effects and mechanics to other card games. So I'm like, it's got the attacking of Vanguard, but then the mana system of magic, and then... You know, well, it's actually not. I think the mana system already is the thing that makes this stand out, definitely. With that, Agumon's DP went up by 3,000 to a total of 5,000. Once an option card is used, it's placed in the trash. You can attack your opponent's suspended Digimon with Agumon or Powered Up. Attack your opponent's suspended Bamon. Or like that. If you attack another Digimon, as long as you aren't blocked by one of your opponent's other Digimon, the two ba Digimon do battle. Oh, so you can intercept an attack even with a Digimon. Got it. Digivolve Agumon into Greymon. That's the Charizard one. I know people don't like it when you compare Pokemon and Digimon, but I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. Agumon has inherited... Effect. These effects can't be activated when they're on the field as a Digimon can only be activated when it becomes a Digivolution card. Agumon's inherent effect is your turn. This Digimon gets a thousand DP, so during your turn, Greymon gets an extra thousand DP. The inherent effect applies even if you Digivolve Greymon again. By carefully choosing Digimon with inherent effects to Digivolve with, you can breed an incredibly strong Digimon. When you want to check a card's inherent effects, cap and hold on it to check the details. You can digivolve with a suspended Digimon, but they will stay suspend. They will stay suspended even after Digivolution. Time to play your Tamer card, Tai Kamiya. Tamer cards have continuous effects that benefit you as long as they're in play in the battle. That's a weird lore thing. The fact that you're placing out the Tamer, because I always assumed, similar to Pokemon, that you were playing as the Tamer. So I get a thousand. Cool. 
Now, because of its effect, all your Digimon get 1,000 DP during your turn. Tamer cards can't attack or block, but they can be attacked by Digimon. But they can't be attacked by Digimon either. Also, if you have several copies of the same Tamer in play, their effects stack. Cool. Breeding phase. Yeah, yeah, oh, you know, just the breeding phase, you know. Normal stuff here. Is did you did evolving block the attack? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll block that. Sure, why not? I hope that's what I'm supposed to do. Do I want to take that attack? Sure. It's just playing the game for me at this point. <laughs> that's fine at this tutorial after all. Okay, my turn. Yep, I get a thousand DP. All of my Digimon get a thousand. Cool. Breeding phase. This time you can't do anything during the breeding phase to so move into the main phase. Cool. Digivolve Greymon into Metal Greymon. Sure. That sounds normal. <laughs> Does look cool though. Now use Metal Greymon to attack your opponent. Sure. Security check. Attacks that instead. Cool. And then pass. Alright, I'm starting to see this. I think, yeah, so far, as it's mentioning here, I think the most interesting concept of this game is the idea that you share a gauge. The fact that both of you share the same gauge that keeps going up and down, depending on your actions, that's really cool. I like that a lot. I think that kind of makes mana, like, the, you know how most card games have a mana system. I always felt mana was very limiting and it just slowed down games unnecessarily but i think whenever you use mana it affects your opponent's mana directly too that makes things a lot more interesting uh move the bedroom on the bird room on to the breeding area from the breeding area to the battle area okay cool use metal gray to attack your opponent sure checks another security card so that's kind of like trigger checks. Interesting. Yep. Huh. All right. Not sure why it wanted me to do that. That seemed like a not a beneficial move. If Digimon you're attacking is deleted or turned to your hand in the middle of a check. The check ends there. A check will also end if your opponent has no security cards left. Do they lose the game if that happens? No, because you still need to attack them after they've run out of cards. Got it. Use Bergamon to attack your opponent. Uh, I don't know. His... He seems to have 11,000. Can't he just block with that? Oh, he can't. Oh, interesting. Now you can use half the half decks to enjoy some battles. Yay! I understood, like, most of that, which is good, you know? It usually takes me a very long time to, un to understand a card game. So the fact that, like, I feel like I've got most of that, like, kind of nailed down. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, that's going to be where I call it for now. Uh... Opinions, it looks cool so far. I don't have any like solid concrete opinions because I'm still learning, but the actual app itself seems pretty nice and polished. So I really like how that works. Um, and the game seems super fun and interesting to play and it's out very, very soon. In fact, is it already out in certain like game stores and stuff? Maybe, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be looking into it. So let me know what you think. If you want to see more, if you don't, so on and so forth, what you're thinking of the card game so far, whether or not you're interested, if not, why? Make sure to like and subscribe. The channel's been a bit dead recently, but don't worry, I am still working on some stuff, of, of daily in fact. And I'll see you later with some more videos.